This is a very special episode of The Story Behind. Believe it or not, two years ago, I pressed publish on the first three episodes of this podcast. The Story Behind the Theremin, The Story Behind Dry Ice, and The Story Behind Sugar Skulls. This podcast was supposed to be a side project for me. It was supposed to just take up a little of my time so I could continue my hobby of podcasting while holding a full-time job and when I was pregnant with my son. That's what it was supposed to be. But in the two years since the show began, it took on more. It became one of my favorite distractions. It allowed me to geek out over things I never had a reason to learn otherwise. And it kept my brain from going to complete mush with pregnancy brain and postpartum brain. Plus, it led me to a career in podcasting. And finally, it became the basis for the story behind book. Now, after last year, with the one year and 100th episode special of The Story Behind the Musical, which was sung, I knew it would take a lot to top that for this year's episode. In fact, it's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you. There's nothing that 100 episodes or more could ever do. I'm your host, Emily Prokop. And this is the story behind Africa by Toto. The band Toto started out with some friends in high school in Southern California in the mid-70s. They played together and separately as session musicians for acts like Boz Skaggs and Steely Dan. When they started playing together, Boz Skaggs' label Columbia heard them and offered them a contract without even an audition. The name Toto came from the bassist, Jeff Picaro, who wrote the word Toto on their demo tapes in the studio to distinguish their tapes from the other bands. Jeff had recently watched The Wizard of Oz when he randomly chose that as the word to write. The band didn't have a name at the time, but when they found out that the Latin translation of Toto meant all-encompassing, they found the meeting to be a good representation of their music. But they weren't always adored by critics. In fact, in a time when punk started to become the absolute coolest thing you could listen to, Toto's soft rock was considered vapid and a little too corporate. Regardless of the fact that the members of Toto were all accomplished musicians and songwriters, the press criticized them as just session musicians and faceless, since they didn't necessarily have a glamorous lead singer to parade in front of everyone. By the way, just 18 hours before recording this episode, Rolling Stone released an article about Toto's Africa, which still referred to them as, quote, a leftover 1970s posse of L.A. session pros. Come on, Rolling Stone, leave Toto alone. Nevertheless, they found their first hit with Hold the Line in 1978. More hits followed, but it wasn't until their fourth album, aptly titled Toto 4 in Roman numerals, that Africa would enter the world but it almost didn't make it, believe it or not. Toto keyboardist David Page was up late one night in 1982 watching TV when he came across a documentary about Africa. This was at the same time UNICEF commercials showing the starvation crisis in Africa were playing on television. David, who is the main character in the Africa music video, was fascinated by Africa ever since he was in grammar school. He went to a Catholic school and he remembered the teachers talking about their mission work in Africa. They had talked about the loneliness they felt, which inspired David years later to write lyrics about a lover visiting one of these missionaries. David also remembered the teachers talking about their interactions with Africans and ceremonial blessings of everything, which included the rains. He's been quoted as saying when he wrote the chorus lyrics, I bless the rains down in Africa, he was stunned at his own words and felt that God was using him for an instrument. By the way, we talked about another song on a past episode of The Story Behind that was inspired by the documentaries and UNICEF commercials portraying the hunger crisis in Africa. Do you remember what it was? The answer will be at the end of the show. We all sing along to the lyrics without giving them much thought nowadays, basically because the song is just so awesome. Remember, this is at a time when punk was climbing the charts and Prince and Michael Jackson were both forces to be reckoned with. When Page came to the band with his song, they laughed at him, joking that this song would be better suited for a solo album, meaning they didn't want to perform it. Guitarist Steve Lukather notably told Page that if the song was a hit, he would run naked down Hollywood Boulevard. But he liked the tune, 
And as they were finishing up Toto 4, they went with David's persistence to record the song. Even though the song is about a romantic partner visiting a lonely missionary, the music video is a cryptic story about a researcher played by David Page, who is searching a library in Africa for a book from which a torn piece of paper he's holding came from. A librarian is working at her desk in the background as African natives are shown in the jungle surrounding the library. Then when the book David is looking for is found, the natives attack with spears, causing a lamp to crash, setting the whole place, including the book David had just found, on fire. The book, by the way, is titled Africa. One of my favorite gifts used on Twitter is David's face as he finds the book and gives a small smile and nod. But what about the rest of the band? Oh, don't worry, they're also in the video sometimes showing up behind books as they're moved in the library, but a lot of the time they're shown performing on a stage that's set to look like a giant stack of books, with the Africa book David is looking for right on top. The video was directed by Steve Barron, who is also the director of noteworthy 80s classics Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, Dire Straits' Money for Nothing, and the quintessential 80s music video Take On Me by AHA. He also directed movies and television, including Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in 1990 and Coneheads in 1993. Guitarist Steve Lukather has said he knew the video was cheesy and hated making them. This was a time before MTV, so music videos weren't made as often and were mostly used as a promotional tool. But the song became a hit in February of 1983, two months before I was born, so I have a feeling I was listening to the song in utero. Africa by Toto's legacy is one that surprises most music journalists. The song came out around the same time as Michael Jackson's Thriller, but it has since found a cult following over the years and because in the age of the internet, everything is meme-worthy. Africa found a new audience. It's unclear what the catalyst was that brought Africa back into the spotlight. Some credit the web series Yacht Rock that ran from 2005 to 2010 for finally giving a name to the smooth rock of the late 70s and early 80s, which included Toto among the many bands and musical artists they portrayed on the fictional comedy. By the way, this is my absolute favorite genre of music, so I'm glad there's finally a name for it. But Africa also came into the limelight when it was used in South Park, Family Guy, and Late Night with Jimmy Fallon in a skit that went viral starring Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake as Boy Scouts in the 80s singing the song. Covers and memes come out on YouTube, seemingly weekly, many of which are posted in the Story Behind Discussion group on Facebook by the amazing listeners of this show, including one cover done using a rubber chicken. A campaign started by a 14-year-old girl named Mary Klim used the hashtag WeezerCoverAfrica, and it went viral with her plea for Weezer to cover the song. At first, the band jokingly released a cover of Toto's hit, Rosanna, which, by the way, was written about Rosanna Arquette, but that's the story for another day. Finally, though, Weezer gave the fans what they wanted. They covered Africa by Toto in June of 2018 on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Toto, in turn, covered Weezer's 2001 song, Hashpipe, a week later at their live show. Weezer's cover hit number one in iTunes and became the band's first Billboard number one hit in 10 years. Weird Al Yankovic even joined the music video for Weezer's cover and included an accordion solo. Allow me to get a little philosophical for my two-year anniversary episode and say that in a world where we wake up to a barrage of unsettling, unnerving, and sometimes horrifying news and social media posts, maybe the smooth, unassuming genius that is Africa by Toto is what the world needs in 2018. Information for this episode was sourced from Music Radar, The Guardian, Rolling Stone, and more links, which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. I asked earlier in the show if you remember another song we talked about in the story behind that was inspired by documentaries about the hunger crisis in Africa. The answer was in the story behind the Band-Aid, in which I talk about the British collaborative effort named Band-Aid that released their song, Do They Know It's Christmas in 1984 as a fundraiser for relief efforts. This week on Trivia Tuesday in the Story Behind Discussion group on Facebook, Jeffrey posted there are three U.S. states that do not have natural borders. 
That is, all borders are defined by lines of latitude and longitude. These are Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. If you'd like to talk about trivia you pick up during the week and have it read on the show, join the Story Behind discussion group on Facebook. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers who support the show through the Patreon page at patreon.com slash the story behind and who also get access to full scripts of the episodes before they go live. Thanks for listening and thanks for a great two years. Ha, 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 ha.